thank you so much for joining us. There is a reported school shooting in Connecticut. And I said, they are going to come after our guns, look for mass shootings. And then magically it happens. This is staged. That's when our world turned upside down again. Alex Jones is the most polarizing figure in this nation. It's hard being a white person. Infowars was thought of as a fringe organization. But at its height, more people were watching than CNN. Unlike controlled media, I try to tell the truth. The government will not tell you that during increased radiation levels, you need more iodine. He turned some story into a need for a supplement. You got parents method acting, the green screens and the lies. It's not real. What do you mean this didn't happen? It started less than 48 hours after the shooting, and then it grew exponentially. We need to analyze all these videos now. Emails, letters threatening us. It was a contagion spreading to billions of people, and it was only getting worse. And that's when I filed the lawsuit against Alex Jones. Uh, this is a show trial. The most egregious case of defamation in American history. 75 million people believe that Sandy Hook was saved. I believe they're being fed and manipulated. You believe everything you say is true, but it isn't. Let's talk about InfoWars business model. You put out a story, it gets people's attention. Go to InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWars is actually an infomercial, right? These families have been hunted, and Jones is getting rich off it. It's just so obvious what they're doing. That's how he runs his empire, and that needs to be stopped. You must tell the truth while you testify. I believe I told the truth. This is a kangaroo court. This is a political action. It's a wish hunt. This is is not your show. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached a verdict. I hope to accomplish an era of truth. Please. Good evening. We begin tonight with the protests shutting down freeways and bridges across the Bay Area for much of the day today, leading to more than two dozen arrests. I'm, I'm sympathetic and um, I understand the cause. I do. And um, I just wish I'd have left 20 minutes earlier. I'd have missed all of this. Just short of the bridge in a sea of cars going nowhere, one driver trying to reach family on the other side. I'm going to try to get through. My daughter needs me. She got four little ones there, and I'm supposed to be helping take care of them while she's working. Yeah, yeah, I work, work over the bridge, so, you know, not many other options. Think about the ferry. The hours dragged on. People started walking their dogs and striking out for supplies. Yes, it's an Uber. Yes. And he's lovely. Our poor Uber driver. <laughs> and amongst the crowd, a constant chatter about the protest that had stuck them all there. Some were sympathetic. Like, yes, it's an inconvenience, but it's also an inconvenient to be a human being in Gaza right now. Stop arming Israel, which I think we should stop arming Israel, so I'm in support of that. There was also plenty of frustration. Well, my thing is civil liberties should be protected, but there is a limit. And when you have this level of a disruption to our whole transportation system, I think we need to draw a line. Attempting to block or shut down a freeway or a state highway to protest is unlawful. It's dangerous. The Highway Patrol says it thought something was coming, but they did not know any specific plans. The deterrent, they say, should be aggressive prosecution, thus the extensive charges. And 236 of the penal code false imprisonment. But protest organizers were very clear that this action was not the last. Here is a spokesperson talking about what comes next. We're going to keep pushing until people pay attention. We know from our history that people's actions work and they won't listen to us unless we hit them where it hurts, which is in, a, in the economic region. And um, so we're going to keep pushing and we're going to keep disrupting. Zelensky admitted Ukraine will lose war without U.S. aid, Senate leader. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warned visiting American legislators that Kiev can only beat Russia with military aid from Washington and is sure to fail without U.S. assistance. U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has claimed Kiev is currently losing the war. 
The lawmaker added, speaking after a meeting with Zelensky, Schumer made the case for renewed U.S. aid, which has all but halted amid Republican resistance in Congress. Everyone we saw, from Zelensky on down, made this very point clear. If Ukraine gets the aid, they will win the war and beat Russia. But if they don't get the aid, they will surely lose the war, Schumer told the New York Times. Making his first visit to Ukraine, Schumer was accompanied by a group of Democratic lawmakers who traveled to Lviv to meet with Zelensky and the country's newly appointed commander-in-chief, General Alexander Sirsky. The trip was reportedly organized to allow the senators to determine Ukraine's wartime needs, according to the publication. We think we will be able to bring back very strong, specific evidence as to why Ukraine is, for the first time, losing the war or, you know, retreating in the war. Schumer continued, likely referring to Kiev's recent withdrawal from the key city of Avdiivka, which Russia said was long used as a launch pad for Ukrainian attacks on Donetsk. The Senate leader went on to highlight Kiev's ammunition shortages, vowing to bring the issue back to U.S. lawmakers and press for additional aid. While senators passed a $60 billion military aid package for Kiev earlier this month, Vocal opposition from House Republicans has stalled the legislation. For the most part, work comes out of work in terms of how I develop an idea. I never begin with an image and I never begin with a drawing. I usually begin with a, a model. It's a way of working from the inside out. I never think in terms of metaphor, nor do I think in terms of what the image is going to look like beforehand. What concerns me is the relationship of the elements that I happen to find interesting at that point and if I think I can invent a new way of looking at those elements or make the possibility of walking in and through and around a piece something that startles me then I think that there's a possibility to proceed. With Charlie Brown in particular the problem was how to bend a shape as it elevated that leaned away from you and turned and that came out of having worked with the uh, ellipses prior. I was surprised in, in, in that people who had absolutely no information about sculpture were able to enter into these pieces and find a certain amount of um, engagement with the sculpture in ways that they probably hadn't before. The experience for a lot of them was fulfilling because in some sense it was startling, because it was new, because they couldn't locate themselves. It had nothing to do with architecture, it had nothing to do with landscape, it had nothing to do with buildings or or mountains or ravines or anything that they could have a touchstone to. This piece has a continuous movement even if you remain stationary. So this piece has a very big stretch and this piece makes you concentrate more on the elasticity of the steel itself than the physicality of the space. The steel in this piece becomes something other than steel. It almost has a feeling that it's being stretched like rubber. Probably one of the most um, primal experiences I had, or generative experiences I had, is watching the launching of a ship when I was about four years old in Marin Shipyard. I went there uh, with my father. To see a big, massive, obdurate shape being launched where it becomes buoyant and free and afloat and adrift where it changes from something that's massive to something that's weightless was something that affected me that I never forgot about. And for a while, it really became a reoccurring dream. Everything can be reduced to right and wrong. Make no mistake about it. We are talking about 
Christianizing America. That which God has given us, we will allow no one to take away. The Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. <laughs> We will make America great again. It's time for us, people, to come out of the churches! Christian nationalism uses religion to justify all kinds of evil. Christian nationalism has been a political tool for centuries. It has nothing to do with Christianity. It's about power and politics. The goal was to enshrine Christian identity as the law of the land. To reclaim the United States for God. You can't take over society unless you take over the seven pillars. And they've gone one by one to do it. We want total war. We are the Christian Taliban. We need to force the people to believe what we believe. When government is in the hands of godly men, it is good. But in the hands of all others, it is evil. is responding to claims made by a new whistleblower who says engineering issues with the company's 787 Dreamliners could cause the planes to break apart after decades of use. Sam Salapore claims parts of the fuselage are fastened together improperly. I'm doing this not because I want Boeing to fail, but because I want, I want it to succeed and prevent uh, crashes from happening. Salapore has not provided any documented evidence, and Boeing has fired back, saying these claims about the structural integrity of the 787 are inaccurate. The issues raised have been subject to rigorous engineering examination under FAA oversight. This analysis has validated that these issues do not present any safety concerns, and the aircraft will maintain its service life over several decades. In 2021 and 2022, Boeing slowed production and stopped delivering 787s because of these concerns. It later said it addressed Address the issue and the FAA signed off, resuming deliveries in 2022. But Salapore's lawyer claims those fixes are not enough. They claim that they've done extensive testing and analysis, but haven't shown it internally to Sam or the other engineers. Boeing is already working on improving its quality control after that door plug flew off this MAX 9 jet in January. A hearing is scheduled next week on Capitol Hill. The company CEO already announcing he'll step down. And last month, a different whistleblower was found dead in South Carolina from what authorities said was an apparent suicide. His lawyer claims Salapore faced retaliation after raising his concerns. Boeing in a statement said the claims he's made are inaccurate. Salapore is expected to testify next week on Capitol Hill. Phil, we have breaking news and on the heels of such an historic season in women's college basketball, massive news that Tara Vanderveer has announced her retirement. A three-time national champion, Vanderveer won in 1990, 92, and 2021, five-time National Coach of the Year. She led Team USA to Olympic gold in the 1996 Atlanta Games, 38 seasons on the farm, and among the most iconic coaches in the history of women's sports. Vanderveer issuing a statement saying, basketball is the greatest group project there is, and I am so incredibly thankful for every person who has supported me and our teams throughout my coaching career. I've been spoiled to coach the best and brightest at one of the world's foremost institutions for nearly four decades. Coupled with my time at Ohio State and Idaho and as head coach of the U.S. national team, it has been an unforgettable ride. The joy for me was in the journey of each season, seeing a group of young women work hard for each other and form an unbreakable bond. Winning was a byproduct. I've loved the game of basketball since I was a little girl, and it has given me so much throughout my life. I hope I've been able to give at least a little back. Tara Vanderveer, the winningest college basketball coach in NCAA history with 1,216 wins. Only two other Division I coaches have hit the 1,200 mark, Gino Ariema and Mike Krzyzewski.
the Garhwal region of um, of India is tucked up from the where the Ganges hits the the foothills of the Himalayas on up to Tibet. And it was the old trade route, and as a pilgrimage route, it took about three months. And it's really interesting that the economy and spiritual life in that area are all tied together. So when the great reformers, Ram, Krishna, Sankacharya, came through there and left their treasures, which we were literally in pursuit of, they were not only bringing spiritual rejuvenation, they were bringing economic rejuvenation. So you think that if a person walks yes, along the Yatra, on the, on the pilgrimage route, it, he actually feels more spiritual satisfaction? Spiritual satisfaction. We began our trek up to Lopal by foot and by pony because this is one area that's exactly like the entire region was up until the 1960s. The only way you can go to this pilgrimage site is by foot or by pony. There's no cars here. And it's been like that for at least 3,000 years. Here we are. This is the summit of Lopal. And there's a little temple there to Lakshma that Hindus have been coming for well over 3,000 years. And there was a little statue there. A few years ago, someone wanted to replace that little temple. They broke the statue. A week later, the man who did it was dead. We are on the top of the world, and all the peaks are covered with snow. And it's amazing to see that even at these heights and passing a great difficulty on a great train, people still remember God. For millenniums, people of all faiths have been coming into these mountains, which to them is the center of life of the planet, representing the higher consciousness of a man, coming to be purified. But all I know is I'm not pure. I was cold and my socks were wet. is Jamika Collins and I play Annika and Annika's Elephants. I have a baby elephant that is so excited to meet you and I can't wait to meet you all too. It looks like poachers. Hi, I'm Annie Evans, playwright and producer of Annika's Elephants. I've always wanted to write about them, how wise they are and how family oriented. There is music and there's drums and the funny is mixed in with some really heartwarming moments. An orphan elephant and an orphan girl becoming a family and surviving alone together in the bush. And I became a storyteller, like my mother before me, sharing the word, spreading the word about the plight of the elephant and all of those other creatures who share this planet with us. Because I am an elephant. On one end, officials say they are cracking down on criminals who carry untraceable and undetectable guns. And on the other hand, law-abiding citizens who legally carry say they're concerned that the government is overstepping its boundaries. And then you still have major confiscations of weapons, uh, very dangerous threatening weapons uh, that just occurred in the capital region uh, a few days ago. Governor Kathy Hochul referring to arrests made in the Pittstown State Forest on March 1st. Two people illegally target shooting had 3D printed guns. It is illegal to 3D print guns. However, federal law allows enthusiasts to build their own guns at home with gun kits. Both types of guns are untraceable or undetectable, creating issues for law enforcement. Unfortunately, the unintended consequence of that is that 
You know, every gangbanger in America wants a ghost gun. And we went through a, a period of time, um, things have gotten a little better, but for a while they were flooding our streets. Albany County Sheriff Craig Apple says 30% of the guns they seize are ghost guns. He says getting them off the streets is a major priority. We work in conjunction with our federal, state, and local partners, and we hit high crime areas and look for simple things as traffic infractions and then try to get that, um, you know, that operator to um, let us search their vehicle. Apple says some liken the effort to stop and frisk, but there's a need to get ghost guns off the streets. You know, if they see somebody trying to experiment and building a gun or whatever, we, we'd like to be tipped off on it, you know, and go talk to them and see, you know, what are you doing and how far along is it and is it in fact illegal? Just today, the New York Attorney General's office won a lawsuit against a Florida-based company for shipping ghost gun components to New York, which has been illegal in New York State since 2021. It's one of 10 companies being sued by the state. Reporting in studio, Karina Dominguez, News 10 ABC.